Hello, today we're going to present the cost simulation features including OpenDSSG. OpenDSSG includes a TCP IP server with a specialized protocol for cost simulation. The, through this protocol and through the Ethernet port, multiple applications can connect concurrently to OpenDSSG for cost simulation purposes. In this case, for this example, I have circuit 5, every circuit 5, I'm going to set my simulation in time steps of 1 minute in time mode just one iteration at a time. And uh, after that, the next tool that I'm going to use, I want to present the TCP monitor. This monitor is a kind of a visualization tool that will allow the OpenDSSG user to know what applications are connected and uh, to the local simulation. Because through the, through the protocol you can control everything. And also, I'm going to use a, an example provided with OpenDSSG, which is uh, built in LabVIEW, just to facilitate the explanation. In this example, we have a, a, a master application that will connect to OpenDSSG through port 6345. And then it's going to start driving the simulation every second, extracting the name of the lines and the currents for each one of the lines. And also drives the execution of other clients. Those clients are implemented as actors, so we can trigger them dynamically. You can just double click on each one of the of the sub VIs or, or subroutines to see what's inside. The connect the communication protocol for OpenDSSG is provided through the through the web. You can just go to the OpenDSSG website as we're gonna show next and get the document, the updated document, that will tell you what are the commands that you need for performing different tasks. So here I'm just going to go to Google, type OpenDSSG, go into the website, and there go to Files. And in that tab, I'm going to select the folder Documents. There you're going to find DSTCP protocol, the document. So just by opening it, it will tell you everything you need to know about the protocol. So this is not limited just to LabVIEW. You can implement it in any programming language that you have or you need. If you're a master on, I don't know, uh, C++, just go ahead and do the implementation. It shouldn't be very complicated. Everything is included there. It will tell you how the, the protocol is implemented. It's an ASCII protocol, so it's very easy to implement. And it provides also examples to check how to, what should be the output and what should be the input uh, when implementing the protocol in different programming languages. So with that, let's check. Let's let's check what is inside the the other clients, the actors that we have. So in these actors, uh, we have exactly the same. They are not controlling the simulation progress, but they are interacting with the simulation, extracting the names of the lines the simulation time and the currents, uh, the currents on the lines as well. So when we start the simulation, we're going to see that the simulation starts uh, progressing and at the TCP monitor, we have the information about the first client to get connected. So we can see the simulation progressing in OpenDSSG and also in the client that we just launched because the time, the simulation time is progressing, but in seconds. Of course, you can adapt that depending on your needs. And now I'm going to I'm going to launch another client. This is one of the actors, and you can see that immediately we launched, immediately after we launched the the new client, the TCP monitor gets updated. So we can see every time we launch new clients, we can see that they are connected, and OpenDSSG is aware of their connection. This is a very good tool for debugging um, multi-component car simulation. Also, when we disconnect uh, any of these clients, uh, OpenDSSG is going to be aware of. Uh, it's going to be aware of it. So you can connect, disconnect elements uh, dynamically, and the, sim the simulation integrity is going to remain. Now, for other types of car simulation, like what people do the most, like for example, using Python or MATLAB and 
connect to the simulation, to drive the simulation and get some results or implement some control routines. We have this example. This example was provided by Alfredo Sanchez from Universidad Santo Tomas in Colombia. The, with this example, we have a, a microgrid, well, uh, a feeder with three microgrids. Each microgrid has a storage device, a PV system, a load, and can run independently. So the algorithm that Alfredo implemented is an algorithm in Python. And the idea is to control the way in which storage and PV interact, uh, get separate from the, from the grid, and gets reconnected depending on the state of charge of the batteries and the amount of power delivered by the PVs. After the whole simulation, uh, he will display some plots uh, using some statistics tools and generating some reports depending on what happened on the simulation. So once we start the simulation, we can see all the variables changing and at the same time, we can see that OpenDSSG is responding to those changes. So you can see dynamically how the simulation time progresses. In this case, we're going on time steps of six minutes. And we're also seeing how the storage devices are discharging, charging depending on the control algorithm that is, is, uh, is ruling the simulation. In this case, the one that is proposed by, by uh, Alfredo using uh, Python. We can see the monitors, the whole environment is responding to that, to those commands, and the simulation itself is uh, delivering us uh, the, the status of the simulation, like if we were inter interacting with a real system, with a real model, or through SCADA uh, with a real feeder. So with this, we can have not only the experience of cost simulating, but also the experience of uh, seeing what's going on in the graphical environment. With this, we can see now the batteries are charging, then discharging, and everything controlled through Python. Of course, we're using a library that's provided with OpenDSSG. You can see you can see it there. You can find it there, and uh, also you can contact Alfredo in case you need more information about this. So once the simulation is done, uh, Alfredo's application will will deliver the reports and generate all the different analysis that he needs.